Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 5, Electrons and Atoms. In this video, we're going to learn the following, that you will accurately compare the wave and particle nature of light together. Um, we're going to talk about energy and the measurement of quanta, and we're going to relate that back to matter. And then we're going to look at the difference between electromagnetic radiation, or spectra, and atomic emission spectra. Okay, so scientists in the 1900s, they observed that um, certain elements emitted a visible light. So an example here is a match. So when you strike a match, you're um, obviously interacting elements with uh, combustion and seeing visible light. Now, they actually took that light and they tried to analyze it and they also tried to relate it to the behavior that they saw with those elements. Now we're going to look at the behavior of electrons within those elements. Now this is a little bit of a review. Notice that when we're talking about waves, there are certain aspects that we need to consider. Uh, the first is wavelength. And wavelength is always crest to crest or trough to trough. And then amplitude. Amplitude is always crest to origin. Now frequency, you'll hear that um, when we talk about electrons. That is cycles per second or hertz. Okay, speed of light, you've probably heard it before. It's 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Um, it's actually wavelength times frequency. Now, what does this mean? All light travels at that speed. Um, that's the maximum. That's the speed limit of the universe. <clears throat> now, notice that some types of light will have longer wavelength or lower frequency, and other types of light will have higher frequency, shorter wavelength. Okay, here is an electromagnetic spectrum. Here we have visible light. Visible light is essentially colors the rainbow. Notice that it occupies a very tiny space within the electromagnetic radiation. And it is continuous. We're going to talk about why that matters. <clears throat> As you go from right to left, notice that wavelength increases. As you go from left to right, notice that frequency increases. So that means the element, I'm sorry, the type of light that's on this side of the spectrum is very high energy and very high frequency. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, matter can gain or lose energy and it's not continuous amount of energy. So there's actually a limit to how much energy it can gain or lose. Now scientists call this a quantum. That is the minimum amount of energy that can be gained or lost by an atom. And there was a physicist by the name of Max Planck who came up with a constant, and we'll see how that relates. Now, you might notice your calculator, that solar, it actually is experiencing what we call photoelectric effect. And this is something that Einstein won his uh, Nobel Prize for. So he noticed, and other scientists noticed, that you needed a certain amount of light to hit a metal surface and when it did it actually would eject an electron and later they would use that electron as electricity to run a device. So please note that a beam of light, could be laser, has wave-like and particle-like properties and we call this light photons. So photons is like a package and in this package, um, it has no mass. However, it does carry energy. And this is an equation that we're gonna use throughout this chapter here, E equals H times nu. So E is energy, H is max Planck, so that's that value that I gave you earlier, and you'll, you'll get that again. And then nu, or this lowercase v, is frequency, so frequency of that specific type of light. So whenever we want to calculate the energy of a light, we're going to take Planck's constants time that frequency of light. Okay, now you might notice light that um, is emitted in a neon sign. The reason why we see that light is because you have to electrify 
the material that's in it and that's typically a gas it could be neon could be other colors and we'll see that later in a lab as you excite these atoms they actually emit a light and when they emit the light they're actually releasing energy okay so we're going to do a lab like this where we have a tube of gas and it's going to be just a pure tube of this gas and it's going to be electrified so we have to run electricity through it and as we run electricity through it it will give off light now this color of light is going to look different than what we see on the instrument that we're going to be reading it with the light travels through a slit and then it comes across a prism and the prism spreads out the colors and we can actually measure specific wavelengths of light and this will actually help us to determine what type of substance we have in that tube. We call this emission spectrum. So it's emitting certain frequency or certain wavelengths of light. So the atomic emission spectrum is a set of frequencies of electromagnetic waves that are for that specific element. No two elements share the same set of specific frequencies. Okay, so in summary, all waves are defined by their wavelengths or frequencies with amplitudes and speeds. And please remember that the speed of light is the universe's speed limit. That's as fast as light can go. And we can calculate it using wavelength, which is lambda, and the V, which we call nu, which is frequency. So all waves travel at the same speed in a vacuum. Um, the waves can have both wave-like and particle-like properties. Matter we know, that means elements, they typically emit and absorb energy in packages, or we call them quanta, and we can calculate that by um, taking Planck's constant times the frequency of that light. And then lastly, white light produces a continuous or rainbow spectrum whereas atomic emission only emits certain bands of color.